Good day everybody, Jeff Bullshit Quarter, welcome to another LS Swap video. In the last video, we realized that the torque converter is not going to fit. we got to find a solution to make it work, or we're going to have to get a new torque converter. Worst case scenario, we're going to have to replace the crank in the 4.8 to put a regular crank in instead of a long crank. That would be a lot of work, and we don't got time for that. So we're going to hopefully throw the torque converter in the mill, Mill off 0.25, re-weld the snout, test it for leaks, and hopefully we'll have no issues. And if we do, it's going to be a lot of work later down the road. So let's get started. She is nasty out, but we're going to make an effort right now. We're going to set the torque converter up. Need to shove a rag down in there. Plug her off. Stick one of these plugs in there. And hopefully, hopefully we can make this work. It's just a quarter inch. Okay, I'm all set up. There's no going back now. Machine a quarter inch off the top and we fit it. cap is just about ready to come off. We're going to have to weld a new one in. Hopefully it doesn't leak. But once we get the machine to depth. Well, that's a quarter inch shaved off. Take her out, make sure all the filings are cleaned out before I remove that plug. And then see if it's going to fit up. Well, definitely seems to fit up better now. I think I can make that work for sure. One test left to do is to put it on the transmission to see if the shaft comes out the back where I milled it. It's kind of awkward trying to get the torque converter on. Not quite there yet. Come on. So that's one hurdle taken care of. Lots of room in there. That makes me feel way better. And it's so nasty out. I got an inch and a half hole saw. I got that piece of metal right here. I believe that's probably about quarter inch thick. Gonna hole saw through that. Fit it up in there. Put a real good bevel in it and then weld her shut and hope for the best. So now this is where the fun begins. I got this hole saw right here and I figure that's going to be pretty close to the size. It's going to fit in the snout. So let's fire it up. Turn on the light. Turn down the speed. I got in low gear. Here's my piece. Gotta do a little bit more buffing yet so I can squeeze it inside. This has got a little bit of a rough edge. Then use my die grinder with that sanding brush. I also got a rag in there to help prevent any shit from going in there. So let's see if we could buff her out. Maybe sand this down a little bit more and make it fit. That is a perfect fit. Now I got to bevel a good edge in there so we can weld her up. I could actually just throw this in the lathe. Go to get a perfect 45 on it, but take too long to set it up. Just gonna use the grinder. Uh, 
I think that'll work quite nicely. Let's get the welder set up. Get that hole welded in. We'll tack weld that into place and weld her up. Problem is I hope I have enough gas to finish this job. As you can see, it's not looking good. Need to cut this end off. Alright, just a moment of truth, my friends. You fuck this up. You fuck things up royally. Close your eyes. So I just welded her, then I ground out those two sections and welded it again because that's where I tacked it. So now I'm going to grind it down flush and see how it looks. Well everything turned out good, welded in nice and solid. I want to bolt it up to the flex plate now, see how it's going to look. And then I want to put some oil in this and let it sit, see if it's going to leak. And if it's good, we're going to assemble the transmission and engine. Here we are, bolted up nicely. All that work was not in vain. That part's pretty good. I got to take the torque converter back off need to put some transmission oil in it let it sit make sure there's no leaks and then the last test will be install the torque converter and the transmission bolt it up check the fitment before we finish tightening up the bolts because if you don't have your torque converter installed properly or if the spacing's wrong the torque converter is going to push into the pump. You're going to crack your pump. And then this rebuild transmission is going to be poo. So that's where I'm at right now. So far, so good. Everything looks good in there. Put my funnel. Got some ATF transmission fluid from Amsoil. Dump her in there. Right. Pour some transmission fluid into this slowly. The key is to put at least a quart of oil in the torque converter, at least. And it fills very slowly. I'll be able to know in a few days if it's leaking. But right now I think she's sealed up good. If there was an obvious leak seeping through, I would see it. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. I think it's motherfucking beer time from the Canadian fridge. Not frozen yet. All right, before we crack into motherfucking beer time, let's go over some video footage I got from the trade show a couple weeks ago. Uh, get some ideas for some overland trailer builds um, once this jeep is done i need something that's going to utilize my quad take my equipment plus camp let's watch these videos we'll crack open this beer and we'll discuss what i have in mind Okay. Then you want to break your framework down by pulling this forward, sliding this bar up, and just okay. letting that sit there. 
Then you come to the back and you just bring the tent down on itself. That's it? Just like that. You bring it down with you as you step out. out. You got four easy folds and it zips into this waterproof casing right here. And then zipper up. Side, so we can see the All right, motherfucking beer time. We got a Pilsner. Before we talk about the trailer, we're almost out of the woods. Last thing is to make sure we have the correct spacing when we bolt up the engine and transmission. And then all should be good. Torque converter looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's not leaking. Good sign. Anyways, motherfucking beer time. Let's have a sip of the good old Pilsner. Ah. <sighs> Good old Saskatchewan dinner right here, boys. Oh, yeah. So what I had in mind was to pick up a landscape trailer that's about 5 feet by 8 feet, the trailer box. I know it's a little bit larger for overland, but for what I need to use it for, it'll be good. I really like the idea... Of that pop-up tent and then you drive your quad up top which is fine but the only problem is there's no secure area for me to put like my sluice box any kind of gear like that's so what I had in mind with the landscape trailer is is I could build a foldable rack up top that folds in on itself have a couple braces in the middle to support the weight of the quad but by a rooftop tent and that hydraulic cylinder and hydraulic power pack I had when I built that log splitter a few years ago, I could build a frame, put the rooftop tent on it, so then when my quad is offloaded and I flip those gates open, I could press a button, hydraulically raise the rooftop tent up just above the, the trailer walls and then fold the tent open. And then plus I'll still have tons of room for all my gear. That's what I have in mind. That's probably gonna cost Probably like 6,000, pretty close to that said and done where, you know, these trailers are like 14,000. And then you get those fancy overland trailers, like 50 grand. <laughs> Fuck that. A person's better off just getting like a all-wheel drive van or trying to find a 4x4 van or getting one converted and then build a camper van inside. You're 100 times better, man. Like 50-some thousand for a fucking trailer. I can't see anybody really spending the money on that. Anyways, motherfucking beer time. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully some real progress is going to start happening soon. Been a slow winter. Last couple weeks didn't really do much. Didn't come out to the garage. Been too cold. Things are starting to change. Spring is around the corner. Then we can really start moving. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.